doors especially come out of Lyra, and that's always uh, fun to see that on the house unfold. Yep, and definitely, and Lara had, brings something to the table that Grace can't pre-level 6, and that is the constant heal coming out from Imperial Siege. And as you said, the Bright Ball plays a big oh. part as well. So we do see an Idris being banned out for the side of AS and Esports. Um, coming into the second draft, oh, they are going to ban out Koshka for that of Chingy. Chingy has shown really, really amazing gameplay on that Koshka. So respecting Chingy, respecting the hero that Chingy is on is always good to see coming out from the side of Impunity. Um, the side of ASN do pick up that Baron. Um, with that Idris being banned out, do you think the side of Impunity would just settle for that Castro to try to poke Baron out of lane in that of early game or would they go for the sustained burst that Ringo has? Oh, they are going to go for that Vox. So it is quite interesting to see how Vox would measure up into a Baron in that of late game. You would think that a usual counter into Baron would be that of CP Blackfeather. So I'm not surprised if the side of Impunity do pick up that CP Blackfeather. And if not, then Ozo, we've seen Ozo played into that of Baron as well and played to great success. Uh, as for the Vox going into Baron, that is something I'm quite skeptical of. Um, honestly, because in the late game, Baron is just so much stronger and Vox just lacks the sustained burst that, you know, um, Ringo has. If not, then the continuous burst that um, Castro has. So, oh, they are going to go settle for that CP Castro. So, there's a good pick into Baron as well, especially if you can catch Baron of God encounter to the CP Castro. I'm not surprised though if the side of ASN Esports will just want to find a hero that can dive in, dive in deep, um, like that of say Glaive. Glaive does well as well, especially if you can continuously stick on that Castro. They are res gonna go respond to a first Invis hero coming out from the set of Impunity with another Invis hero of the fold in the folds, and that will be Taka. Looking at this draft. You know, honestly, I, I personally think that the draft is, you know, just, just looking at it alone, I personally think that the draft on the side of AS and Esports is just so much um, stronger. So, honestly, like just, just going through draft itself, I'm not sure if I request a duo, my partner in crime is back, but I'm just going to throw out a random question right now. Who do you think has got that stronger draft? The one coming up from the side of as an esports or the draft coming out from the side of impunity okay with that i probably got the answer now my partner in crime has yet to come back to me um so i'm just gonna solo through this till we hop right hop right into the house here unfold so going through the draft, I'm sure I'm sure the casters are like really looking forward coming into this game because honestly we, we've we've seen Taka doing very well into that of Castro before, but generally that would be the weapon Castro in lane when Taka can come into lane to gank. But we cannot quite forget the early game potential and the early game prowess that uh, Grace has as well. So I, I think there are a lot of things to consider coming into this match, whether or not the side of ASN Esports can counter or build up a counter measure into that Grace that will be, and I assume, very, very aggressive in that of the early game. And, and also one more thing as well is whether or not this Baron can position himself well. And because going in, picking up Baron, it's really just down to your positioning. I mean, you have you have your damage, you have everything. So your, your positioning will be key in all the team fights that follow in the game itself. And Baron as well, do not scale very well in the early game uh, as much or as good as say that Castro or even Vox. I mean, Vox just gets the first three items or even a Shiver Steel and can kind of counter the burst coming out from the side of Baron. Anyways, we are right into the fold right now. So let me just hand it really quickly over to our amazing caster, Asurai and Mini. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you for that luxury. It's going to be a fantastic game. Impunity versus ASN. I personally really like the draft from ASN here. I think the Taka pick as a last pick was the absolute perfect pick. 
it counters um, Vox quite well. It counters Crystal Power Kestrel. And I think that it's going to be a lot easier for ASM to win this um, with what they've got. But in order, but it is obviously possible for Impunity to, to win it. But in order to do that, they have to have a Kestrel rotate up to lane and just kill Baron consistently. We're casting alongside me today for this match. I've got Fantastic Azurai. What is up? What is up? And now immediately we see a little bit of a tussle between the Lyra and the Grace. So it's the battle of the captains. Who will win? It's just a little bit of poking here. It's gonna be a long, drawn out, just attack left and right. But yeah, as you were saying, I did hear a lot of like, oh, this top is gonna be perfect. But then, what is like on the side of Unity here? Aside from maybe the Crestral pushing up to the lane, <clears throat> keeping this Baron in check. What can they do if ever this does, you know, spiral a little bit out of control, going into the favor of ASN? Well, obviously, it has to be Crystal Festival, which is allowed to wrap up, but I don't think she will be. Blixity's been quite out of control. And they are going to be chasing down onto Blixity. And can he find his way to the safe zone? I think that's going to be the case. Tezza Boy, though, look at this with the flanking. The Chingy as well, they want to go in for the dive, but is that dive advisable? Chingy is. Actually, Blue Citadel will be taken down. Chingy actually gets the first blood. And looky here. Bottom side, Tezza Boy trying to run away. Imperial Seal, Mobility Boost. Can Quartavol actually go for the chase? I mean, this Grace, he does have the, the ability to do so, but... Okay, there you go. Defy's gonna be here. That's gonna be That's it. Oh, nope. oh we're there. Wrong. It was, it was well played by Lyra, obviously managing to survive for long enough to force Vox to rotate down. He did lose the CS, so it's better than nothing. As Lyra, you're really quite good at being able to run away that Imperial Sigil speed boost, even against someone like Grace, who has such high move, high base movement speed and already had boots at that point, whereas Lyra doesn't. Um, it's pretty easy to go over. There's Taka trying to go in. Oh, and they're chasing him down. Shingy surviving. And... Just maybe some of you guys who don't know, actually even me for like a few moments ago, the, the reason why maybe Chingy, you know, Chingy's name sounds familiar is because he was an ex-artisan player before he shifted up to ASN. I don't know if the analysts uh, cover that, but yeah, just a little bit of a fun fact for you guys out there. Yeah, I think Blue Stick did well to, because to, he knew Taka was going to win fame. So obviously after the first rotation, Taka went straight to Kestrel to try and get the kill, because if you can stop Kestrel getting those items, get that first Shatter Glass, Get that, um, and then start to build up pure damage. Then you're gonna be, then you're gonna be okay, and that's exactly what Shingy was doing. And then Kestrel had that two camera trap ready, and Shingy tried to invade one versus two, and that's easily gonna be a win for Unity. And there's Kestrel Three. trying to sneak up towards the top. Ooh, the damage though from the Kestrel glimmer shots all day long, baby. But Shingy actually not batting an eyelash. He's gonna go for the trend in the bottom side of the map and getting himself a little bit more. But at what cost? His teammates are taking quite a bit of damage, although that is Tesla Boy on a Lyra. So again, Imperial Steel is up. They can just keep spamming that up and keep themselves healthy for the meantime as Chingy is running a little bit rampant in the jungle. Quarterball will be spawning this pesky Taka for a little bit, but the Taka does have the damage, chasing it down. Oh, Quarterball with the movement speed boost dives back in, has the help from Blue City, and still gets the kill. There you go. Goes with the MGS, no gear solid all day long. And Tesla Boy here with the bulwark, but it's not gonna be enough as there's another glimmer shot connecting. And that's gonna be looks a bit a one for one trade. Tesla oh, Boy. Shingy's yeah. taking the back. <laughs> Luke's the trying to get a kill onto Baron, but Shingy just took the backs away from Kestrel. Now Kestrel's gonna try and invade again, try and take Taka's jump away. Shingy's playing this, um, actually not, she's going for the turret instead. Baron's not playing. Tron's gonna go down, probably about half health after this push. And Ale's gonna be able to clear his way. But Shingy's playing this Taka so well, managing to dive the turret, secure the kill on Call of War, and not fall to the Kestrel. It's really, really hard to do um, against someone like Grace. Grace can just keep running away from you. And it seems like you're never gonna be able to catch her. But Taka did. Taka, using that movement speed, using Titan to dodge the Holy Nova from Grace. And there isn't a fountain yet on um, on Quartervoir. Still needs 300 gold to get it. Whereas Tesavoy has now picked up that fountain, so it's a really good time for ASN to fight. If and Baron has got a sword blade, so yeah, they really want to um, want to go in 
They've got about a 400 gold lead, which is pretty much nothing, but that does um, mean they've got a fountain and impunity don't. So like I said, they do have all of that sustainability with the fountain and ASN, I think they know what's up. They, they're saying what you did or they're doing what you just said and they're going aggressive into this one. Although they have to be very careful because Grace is a pretty good frontliner, has a benediction, has a soul, Holy Nova and Holy Nova indeed slams it down. But you gotta be careful, Chingy again with this Taka is just making it even for ASN. He's going back into the jungle once more, but I don't think he'll find anything except for maybe that Crystal Sentry. So no joy for him there. And Teza boy did falter. Although Impunity, can they actually capitalize this into a t uh, into a tier one turret? I don't think so. Aeon is right here, so they'll be able to defend for the meantime. But Quartevoir, barely All right. that turret Ooh. is almost dead. I think and they will. Chingy... Yeah, Death they will you? get him. The no, 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 no. The next wave <laughs> pushes in. The next wave that pushes in will obviously get that turret. It is on one. Maybe two million shots away from dead. But Kestra did well. Both set up to lane and take and uh, get the turret as low as she can. But now Kestra's going to our backs and they are not up. She waited, took the backs while Kestra was trying to push the wave. So now Baron knows Kestra's going to be rotating up because Kestra hasn't got backs. And so just what do you do? You just go to lane and try and get a kill. So Shingy on 43 CS to Blue City's 31. Shingy is about 10 CS ahead, which is really good for attacker. You want to starve out this Kestrel as much as possible. Kestrel has got a first Shatter Glass, and you expect to see maybe a Broken Myth or a second Shatter Glass as her second item. And ASM want to just push the wave into grind. Maybe they want to fight, actually. Shiggy is there. There's a active camera trap, so they're not going to go too deep. And ASM want to push the wave so they don't lose their own turret more than try going. No, Dak is going to dive in. There is no intervention here for Court of Law, but still the damage pushes through. You did see there, I believe that was... Yeah, the active Vox camera trap. Yeah, There's an active oh, camera actually... trap orchestral that stunned up Baron, which just destroyed his health. And with that, they were able to capitalize. One turret, one kill, and the Impunity are starting to pull away just by a smidgen. 1k gold lead on their team's net worth. That's extremely good. Grace is actually going for a crucible second item as opposed to we've seen Echo, we've seen Shatter Glass on Grace. I think that that's all right. It makes sense against this Baron to try and stop the um, try and stop the pure burst from Baron, or maybe to try and stop the mortal wound that sweats you from Taka. Because there's nothing, there's no stuns to block. Attacker's gonna be slightly out of position, is he? No, Ooh, Chingy. Nah, the Holy Nova connects and he'll be able to actually keep Death Q alive for the meantime. And, oh, newsflash on that first game that we had, first best of three series between Infamous and Bren Chong. Infamous won the third game, ladies and gents. Infamous won two to one in that series. And just to let you know, oh, Goldmine just soloed by Shingy. That's a smart thing. Tackers do that an awful lot. Oh, go he goes in, activates the Itsretsu, one for one, trade the Vox for the Baron. This is both of their heaviest damage dealers done, or one of the heaviest damage dealers that, that they have. But Kaiten goes back in once again, Xretsu, look at this man, he is fearless, Chingy, proving himself to be a very a foe or an adversary worthy of impurity, and the chase is on. He wants Blue City, or does he want Cordoba? He's actually making it a little bit bad for himself, and... No, look, look, or sorry, Lyra's here will not connect. Impunity, kind of making him think of who he would actually target, and he gets punished for that one. Yeah, Blue's the doing extremely well, landing as many glimmers as possible on that on tackle from the casual. Aeon, oh, Ooh, just the lock. Tessa oh, boy running off. away. Benediction, Holy Nova, can he connect the shots? Def, you will, and that's gonna be another kill for impurity my goodness they just don't let up they get kill after kill after kill my goodness man does look like it's gonna be a double shatter glass build on blue today for pure damage against the glass kind of power this is gonna be the block attack. and chingy trying to do the best that he can to actually push them back death q believe he charged in with his ultimate Ooh, chingy just at the brink of life, but death follows him through. Aeon 2 2 2 is here. One shot, one kill, what was that? The damage from Blue City is going a little bit too wild. Well, 
Okay, there you go, there you have it. Second turn is well destroyed and Impunity are snowballing this game. That's exactly what Impunity needs to do against someone like the Baron Attacker, is use the Crystal Kestrel, secured already six kills, and just rotate up the lane and kill the Baron as much as possible. I'm pretty certain it will be double Shatter Glass, maybe Shatter Glass Boss Burn on Blue City. And because Baron has now built a light shield, we hardly ever see defense on Baron until he's got three, maybe four items before he builds um, a shield. And even that is going to be an Aegis. But Aeon is forced oh. to build a shield already. Word of they War. Want they want to push their return turret from ASA. And they should just name him Full Voir because he is just going full ham on to this members of... And this is just too good for Impunity and they are fearless in this one. They but Chingy going with the backstabs. He's trying to give a little bit of space here for ASN to actually capitalize or the ASN's Baron to capitalize, but that's not going to be the case as they still blow up, blow him up. There's going to be the flanking or the side maneuver from that one shot, one kill. Chingy goes in hoping for something, but still nothing. The passage for Tezza Boy, and that'll just be his exit out, as we call it in my industry, the Mamba out for himself. And that's going to be at least the ace, although that was two for nothing. Yeah, it was slightly poor target focus from ASN. Aeon was trying to 1v1 the Kestrel, trying to 1v1 the Vox, and Shingy was trying to 1v1 the Kestrel. And so they didn't focus the same hero, and that sometimes it does work if you focus different heroes, but it wasn't the best idea in that fight because Lyra's heal was on top of Baron, but Vox has a poison shift, so there was a mortal wound to stop Baron healing up as much. Aeon hasn't got a mortal wound, as we see a pause just briefly. Um, and because Aeon hasn't got a mortal wound, Shingy's the only one with that uh, stopping the heal. Because Shingy expected onto Kestrel, that means the divine intervention from Quartervoir that landed onto Deku did a full burst of heal, whereas Lyra's heal was reduced by that mortal wound. And so a Aeon lost the 1v1 that he should win, and Taco against Kestrel didn't manage to do the damage he needed to because he only had an aftershock and a storm stronger banner at that point so now yeah. maybe it might be a good idea but they need to either focus the same person either box or kestrel but they can't split focus as they were in that team fight holy nova stun connecting onto tezza boy but that's a three-man bulwark for the meantime chingy for the backstab once more but the positioning is just too bad aeon was not there at all for that fight so there was no chance for asn to actually get a win for that one just a little bit of a question. I mean, in terms of itemizations, it's not really advisable, right, for a Baron to go for a Poison Shiv just to get that Mortal Wound, maybe to counter the ultimate of the Grace? It generally isn't, because as a Baron, you want to do as much burst damage as possible, and mm -hmm. you think, okay, I'm going to change my build and build Poison Shiv this game. You have to do three basic attacks to guarantee the Poison Shiv, the Mortal Wound will be applied, and Fox does that with a basic attack and a Sonic Zoom. He does three basics and guarantees to apply it. Baron, it takes so much longer at this point. He's going to get caught out by him. Ooh. And caught out indeed, but he survives! Wait, hold that thought! Is this going to be the possibility of ASN to come back from this one? They're going to be using the passage of Tezza Boy to actually chase him down. The heals are coming out left and right with this great two-man holding over as well. And will it be Impunity to close out this fight? I think it should be, but Shingy is high on HP, he's high on Adrenaline, but he will be able to get away Kitan just to be used for that invisibility, but they know where he is, chasing him down. Court of War, Death Q, he wants it indeed, my friend, but will he be able to get it? The shield, the micro maneuvers, oh, but the humanity, but Death Q will be able to finalize that one. But almost, Shingy doing the best that he can, but you know the song, sometimes I did my best, but my best was not good enough. When you try your best, but you don't <laughs> succeed. It was, oh, it's also it was that song. <laughs> there, that song works as well. The problem with Shingy was, had no, Shingy had no energy to perform the x retsu after he used um, Kaku a second time. So obviously, when you overdrive and Kitan, it costs zero energy. That's the, one of the perks of overdrive and Kitan. But obviously, he could Kitan, but he couldn't x retsu If Shingy had enough energy to use the x retsu then DefQ would have fallen. And Quartervoir probably wouldn't have been able to 1v1 Taka because there was a Crystal Sentry there. But Shingy just not quite having enough energy. And so that was a good a good chase from Vox. He knew that he could probably get the kill and he did chase it and did secure it. But no, um, no, no, nothing really taken by Punity. They got a little bit of jungle, but they didn't get a Crystal Sentry charge and the gold mine is uh, 
still it's now it's now turned into the Kraken, so no one will be getting that. And I think ASN they need to focus the same hero. It doesn't matter who, as long as it's not called a war, just focus the same hero and you'll be fine. The Baron has or rather the Kraken has spawned, so that is at least the an objective that Impunity can look for unless they want to go for the fight. They know that they have the upper hand here for the meantime, but they gotta be careful because Chingy, if we can execute well, or if this Baron can survive for as long as possible, they maybe can go for that kite damage while Chingy goes in and disrupts the backline with his dive potential as that Taka. Yeah, definitely. And I think Impunity, they're just trying to set up for a fight. They don't need to force the fight. Obviously, Grace can do it with her... Um... Benediction to engage, and she can also use. She's got a lot of good holy memory stuns, and there's Vox going in onto Baron. Going in onto Baron, indeed. He's trying to kite as much as possible, using that turret as a safety line for him to actually just back upon while Chingy does damage into the front line. But they gotta back away, and he, oh no, he gotta back away. But that one shot, one kill. The ultimate of the, the, the pestle still proving to be a bit dividend, and Chingy. Survives with a sliver of HP. This choke turret will not survive, and that's going to be another win here for Impunity. 17 to 5 in terms of the kills. What is ASN Holy. to do? ASN, they, the Baron is just in such a such a lot of trouble because he's bought Tier 2 Kinetic Shield against Luxody on Kestrel. Ke Kestrel hasn't even built a pierce a pierce yet. Just full damage and then clockwork to amplify that damage and get get quite a lot of cooldown. But then Death Q just jumps on top of Baron, and because Baron's only got shield, hasn't got any armor against Vox, Baron's gonna fall so quickly with this gold lead that um, that impunity have already got. That means Baron's got three items, Vox has got three damage items, and double defense and full boots. So Vox is already fully built, and Baron's only got three items out of a possible six. So this is a really good time for impunity to fight. I think ASN can turn it around as long as they engage, they don't let themselves get poked out by Kestrel before uh, before the fight even starts. They have to find Kestrel with a flare, attack a dive in, Baron jump jets in and just try and burst her down before she can poke you out. Now like you said, ESN still have a chance into this one. Kraken is up. And maybe that is the thing that Impunity does do need. Maybe bait out the Kraken fight here, the Kraken dance. Tezza boy. Into the front line. It's just both of these teams. Careful. Don't want to go overly aggressive. They're trying to feel each other out for the meantime. But this Vox is ready, trying to chip it down. Of course, we do have a Kestrel on that active camo. Look at how long that stealth time is. You can just keep activating that and nobody would know the better. As long as, long as they don't have any uh, vision to do so. And looky here, there's a lot of just... Okay, wait, hold on thought. It's gonna be the push in. The damage though from Chingy as well as Aeon pushing them back. They have to split up because this Baron has so much AoE potential. He slaps it down with the ultimate. Although, still, looky here, Impunity are not taking any Both damage teams. at all as well as ASN. Both teams backing off. That's supposed to do extremely well to get the vision um, before they go anywhere. Before ASM walk into a place where they're about to be a camera trap, there's already vision. And Shiggy's just walking through a couple of traps. They have no idea it's there. One shot is up. Go for it, Kestrel. That looks like he didn't want to do the one shot into the trap. There was actually two traps um, where Shiggy is standing right now. And that could have oh, got Oh, do they know? This is a 2v3. Kestrel's not here for the meantime. Grace could be out of position here. Speed boost away, Death from the silence as well, looking for the damage, Bulwark to come out from the Lyra just for the defense, or maybe the cash off here, Cordovar, one shot, one kill, will not connect, Death is right there, chasing it down, Express 2 activated here by Chingy, and they are actually pushing back, winning this fight, Cordovar has to back away, and the perfect positioning, he finds the Kestrel, that's one, that's gonna be two, no, Death is still alive, there you go, that's gonna be a second one, Aeon does die, but well, at what cost? He got two for the price of one, and my goodness, ASN winning a fight. Yeah, Shiggy playing very well there. Started off, they tried to dive Fox, but then they had to back off. Grace got the Holy Nova off, and there was nothing they could um, they could push from there. But after that, they saw, as you said, they were 2v3, and so they went in on Cordovar. Then they tried to go on a Death Q. It was well played by Death Q to do damage and be able to back away. They don't know where Cordovar is, they're gonna try and take the Kraken, it's risky. Grace has quite a good steal potential. 
Quad Bar's just sneaking around. He's not there, says the boy. Get his flare out. You've got to try and find him there. Now I know where Quad Bar is with that flare. And it's, I think ASN should be able to secure it with the, with attacker. But it's going to be. Can they do so? Oh, I'm, I'm going to do a countdown. Three, two, one. Can he do it? One shot, one, one kill. Shot. Woo! Again. again, the second one shot, one kill crack and steal of the day. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Vainglory 8, split 2, and they're going aggressive. They're chasing it down, and they're looking for the closer. Aeon is bursting away. The Baron is not into the fight, but Chingy says another another no against the opposing team. That's going to be the 2 for 1 right now, but can he do it? Can he break even? No, I don't think he's going to be able to. Grace is still pretty high in HP, and this Vox is just too mobile for him to handle. And this could be it. 40, 30 seconds left into the end of their respawn timers. And this should be game one. That will be game going over to Impunity. It was a risky decision to try and take the crack. And obviously, you know with a Lyra and attacker, you're not going to be the quickest. Attacker has got a storm, storm Crown, which does help an awful lot at taking neutral objectives. But as a hero, attacker isn't particularly quick at taking crack. Of. So they knew that Kestrel would have respawned. The new Kestrel was up. And Kestrel obviously going towards the top of the lane which is a really good place to start cracking from. People expect you to be in your jungle. If you go to the top yeah. of the lane, they're, they're not expecting that. And obviously the steel, pretty simple with the Crystal Kestrel. If you have vision on the Kraken, as Water Bar is doing really well to keep getting, then it's not too difficult to steal it, especially to get away from Attacker and Lyra. And so, it was, it was obviously, there was one good team fight from ASN. They got two kills traded over instead of one. But then... Aeon died, and so I think what ASN should have done is just push the turret, maybe a second turret, then backed off and tried to take another good team fight. Because if it was a neutral team fight where everyone was full health, full energy, I think ASN probably could have taken it because Aeon was ramping up his damage, got four damage items, still had more items to build, whereas Vox had no more items to build. But they, they tried to get the Kraken to be push more turrets, and it kind of backfired on them. Yeah, Aeon, if you actually check the, his kill deaths.